So, here we are. I've seen a lot of people trying to pick up new weapons recently, so I thought that a beginner's guide to using the lance would be quite helpful for some people. The intention of this guide is to go over all the basics and give someone the knowledge that they need to use the weapon effectively, and then we're going to go over some of the more complicated things like switch skills that I'd recommend, and then finally we're going to have a quick chat about advanced techniques and where to go from this guide. Lance is often perceived as a noob weapon because it's really easy to pick up, has a big shield, and lets people sit in front of monsters without any real problems. The reason why this misunderstanding has stuck around is largely because people think of weapons in the terms of attacking, where most of Lance's complexity comes from its defensive aspects and how to use the different blocks that it has to pivot into different attacks. In short, Lance is incredibly simple to pick up, but it's also one of the more difficult weapons to master. Thankfully, that means that the start of this video is incredibly easy. Stage one of your Lance journey, picking up the weapon. This is the simple stuff that is gonna let you finish a hunt with the Lance, so anyone that is watching this with some Lance knowledge, you might find some simplifications of things. Don't worry, we'll correct them later on when we need to. Let's run into the training room, unsheath the weapon and just feel our way around. If we press all the buttons, we'll find that Lance has three different attacks, mid thrust, high thrust, and a sweep that you'll need to charge up, but we'll ignore the sweep for the moment. The mid thrust compared to the high thrust has more horizontal reach and does less damage, while the high thrust does more damage, has better vertical reach, but has worse horizontal reach. You can do either of these pokes three times, the third hit doing more damage than the previous two. And for that third hit, it doesn't matter if it's high or medium. It will do the same increased damage compared to the first two hits of the combo. After the third hit, you'll have to stop and wait for the animation to end. The quickest way to reset this is to press the dodge button, as dodging is faster than waiting for the animation to end so that you could attack with the three hits again. If you try to dodge roll, instead of rolling, you'll do a short hop. It still has invulnerability frames, but they are smaller. You have a, a smaller amount of invulnerability frames compared to the normal roll. So you'll have a harder time dodging through attacks compared to other weapons. Thankfully, you have your shield. If you press the trigger slash shoulder button, you enter a guarded state. This will block monsters attacks in about a 220 degree angle in front of you. If you block an attack, it will take some chip damage off your health and it will drain some of your stamina. And there are also certain attacks that you cannot guard unless you also have the guard up skill. Right, quick tangent to talk about useful skills for your armor set. The value of skills like guard and to a lesser extent guard up will change as you play Lance more and you get more comfortable at using the weapon. In this early stage, having guard is very useful for effective hunting as the guard skill will reduce chip damage, reduce stamina consumption, but most importantly, it will reduce knockback slash hit stun when you block big attacks. So at this stage, I'd recommend three points of guard, and if you're taking a lot of knockback from certain monsters, bringing five points of guard against them specifically is also a good idea. However, there is an argument that you shouldn't bring any guard and instead use anchor rage to overcome heavy knockback attacks. Doing so will help you adapt quicker later on, but it's really up to you, it doesn't matter too much. Speaking of guard up, I think getting you into the practice of making multiple armor sets 
early on is going to be the best way to do it. So I recommend making one armor set with guard on, guard up on, and one set that doesn't have it. That way, you can have a better armor set when you're fighting monsters that don't need the guard up skill. Getting back into the moveset side of things, let's go back and have a look at the attacks and get a feeling for how the weapon flows. You do your triple poke, you hop backwards, and this resets your attack, and it also resets your positioning, and then you repeat. If the monster attacks you, you block with your shield, and then you go again. It's really that simple. This is the settling into the weapon level, and it seems like this is where the majority of people are at. If you see other YouTubers saying that Lance is a boring, low damage weapon, or rank it lowly on weapon tier lists, naming no names, it's normally because they haven't progressed past this stage of the Lance. But that's also not really their fault, as the stages of the Lance only get more difficult from here on. At this point of time, the Lance might feel a little bit monotonous, and you might get the feeling that it's difficult to keep up with monsters' movements, especially in multiplayer when the monster is chasing the gunners on the other side of the area. But don't worry, we're gonna fix that. And we'll start that by introducing the charge. If you guard and press both attack buttons at the same time, your hunter will start charging forward, doing small ticks of damage while running, and then pressing the attack button will end the charge with a big thrust. Don't worry if you haven't got the right angle for the thrust, as you can always go past the monster and then press the attack button while holding back on the joystick to do a reverse sweep. If the monster is really far away from you, you might see a puff around your character as you're running towards it. That indicates that your charge finisher is going to do more damage. This is a great tool for keeping pace with the monster. And if you're struggling to keep up, I strongly recommend that you use the charge more often. It's also got a very good switch skill alternative that I'll cover later on. Let's talk about that charge move. When you press the high thrust and mid thrust buttons together, you start charging a sweep. If you just hold down the button, your lance will flash, then flash again, and after that, your character will smack the lance across whatever is in front of you. It's a charge move. If you release the attack before it's charged, you'll do a pitiful amount of damage for the amount of time it takes. However, you also don't want to overcharge the move. Once the first flash has happened, the sweep will now be doing maximum damage, so it's in your best interest to release the attack as soon as it's done to maximize your DPS. So to clarify, you won't do less damage if you release the charge too late, but you also won't do extra damage for that extra time that you've invested into the charge. Charged Wide Sweep cannot combo into itself like Mid Thrust or High Thrust can, but it does combo with the thrusts. So Charged Wide Sweep into Charged Wide Sweep into Charged Wide Sweep isn't possible, but Charged Wide Sweep High Thrust Charged Wide Sweep is possible. I might touch upon this later, but Charged Wide Sweep is definitely a move that you want to adjust yourself to, because when it's timed correctly, it's one of the best attacks that Lance has access to. One of the things that you can do to help yourself with this is to keep yourself on the left cheek of the monster's face. The sweep always goes counterclockwise, so if there's something on the right of you the, the lance might hit before it hits the weak spot, you'll lose out on a ton of damage. So aiming to keep the sweep clean of anything other than the part that you want to hit is really, really vital for good use of charged wide sweep. 
So this is the next stage. This is about taking the basics that we've got and applying the rest of the weapons kit to the fundamentals. So the first revealing what's behind the curtain is there are a lot more ways to block than just pressing the shoulder button. So let's start by looking at the different ways that you can block. This isn't the full list, as we're ignoring switch skills and we're ignoring wirebug attacks. Those will come later. But this is most of them. Firstly, counter thrust. If you're in a guarded state, you can press the mid thrust button and it will put you into an animation where you hold up your shield and draw back your lance. If nothing happens, you'll do a big counter-attack. But if the monster, or another player, hits your shield in this state, then you'll block the attack and respond with a counter-attack. This move can be done after the third hit of the poke combo, which is great for chaining your combos together, and it can also be used to deal with monster combos by chaining counter-attacks. Next up is Power Guard. To activate Power Guard, you press the dodge button while you are in the counter-attack animation. This will make a blue aura appear, and now you'll guard in 360 degrees, which is very useful for certain attacks. Power Guard has different properties compared to other blocks. Once you activate it, you will constantly lose stamina until you block an attack. But once that happens, the stamina that you would take from blocking the attack is greatly reduced, but at the cost of increased chip damage. And if the attack were to put you into, into a large amount of knockback, then the knockback would be reduced while you are blocking with Power Guard. The main value of Power Guard is for situations where the monster is about to hit you and it would do lots of knockback, or if the monster is about to do a big long string of attacks and you know that if you don't power guard, you'll run out of stamina and then it'll hit you for full damage with the last hit of the combo. Next on our list is guard dash. I won't go too much into it, as I've already made a, vid a video about it, but the main benefits of Guard Dash are that it comes out really fast, it leads into Leaping Thrust, which is one of the best moves that Lance has access to, and it also increases your resistance to knockback. I'll touch on Leaping Thrust, and then we'll have a proper look at knockback resistance. After you perform Guard Dash, the attack options that you have available to you change from high and mid thrust to leaping thrust or shield attack. Shield attack is an okay move that deals low damage, a small amount of stun. It's not great for damaging things, but it's good if you want to slowly rack up a knockout on the monster and it's useful as a repositioning tool, so it's fine. Leaping Thrust, on the other hand, is an attack with three hits, but if you hit the first one, the second two hits will magnetize to the monster's hit hitbox, so it's effectively a, a huge single hit in three parts, which makes it really, really powerful for element and status. It comes out really fast, which is great for raw damage as well, and combined with Charged Wide Sweep, it's the best combo that Lance has available. I've already made some videos about optimal combos, so if that sort of thing interests you, maybe go check them out. Okay, let's jump back to knockback. Knockback resistance is a really simple concept for the Lance, but it's not explained very well in game. So to make it short and sweet, each attack that the monster does has a specific level of knockback. If you block a weak attack, you won't get staggered, and if you can and you can continue attacking straight away. If you block a stronger attack, you'll enter a stunned state and you won't be able to do anything for a brief period of time. Obviously, that hit stun isn't something that you want during the fight, but thankfully there are ways to increase your resistance to knockback. 
You could use the guard skill, which at certain levels will increase your resistance to knockback, or other methods such as guard dash, as it temporarily gives you three levels of guard while using the move. Because guard dash can give you effective levels of the guard skill, it's really useful to learn when to use guard dash against monster attacks, as it'll allow you to reduce the amount of guard that you bring on your armor set, which in turn allows you and your armor sets to have more options and more variety. Speaking of messing around with the amount of guard skills, I think it's a good point to weave in the two basic wirebug skills that you have access to. Effective use of the wirebug skills will also help mitigate the amount of guard skills that you need to bring to the fight. The main wirebug move that you're going to be using is Anchor Rage. The move itself is really simple. You press the button and you enter into a guard animation. If the monster hits you while you're in that state, you do a counter attack. Firstly, the attack itself does decent damage. But secondly, and most importantly, it also gives you a damage buff for the next 20 seconds based on the color that the lance glows after you counter the attack. It can glow three different colors, technically four, but the other color isn't from Anchor Rage. The three colors are red, which gives you a 5% raw bonus, orange, which gives you a 10% bonus, and yellow, which gives you a 15% bonus. The color that you get is determined by the knockback that you would have received if you, have, if you blocked the attack. So if you anchor rage against an attack with little knockback, you'll get red, medium knockback, you'll get orange, and you'll get yellow if you block an attack that would have given you a huge amount of knockback. Unfortunately, that does mean that using anchor rage really, really effectively requires a lot of knowledge about monster attacks. But once you're there, you basically remove the need for using guard on your armor set because you take no chip damage and no stamina consumption when you block with anchor rage so it's perfectly suited to be used against the high knockback moves as it'll give you the best damage buff and it'll give you the best defense per wire bug and this is all doubly so when you use guard dash against the medium knockback moves, and then you've got your normal counter thrust for the weak attacks. Making good use out of all of those different guards fluidly in the fight is where things start to get very complicated for the Lance. Not only do you have to worry about how best to attack the monster, but you also have to worry about how best to defend. But it's really worth getting over that hump because once you do, you feel like this unstoppable killing machine. It's good fun. That said, we've also got the second switch skill, Twin Vine. Twin Vine is the odd one out of Lance's kit. Back in the base game, one of the memes going around was that Lance only had one wire bug attack. And that was because Twin Vine sucked really badly. Thankfully, Sunbreak has given it some significant improvements, and it's gone from being in the never ever use category to the niche category. Using the move, you stab a kunai into the monster, creating a tether. You can then use that to jump to the monster, which is really good at improving the lance's you know, like ability to get to the monster very quickly, or at least it would if all of the other options that allows Lance to get to the monster quickly didn't exist. The real value and the thing that they've improved for Sunbreak is that when you've got the, the tether active, it gives you an invisible cre increase to your guarding ability. So when it's active, you have effectively gained three levels of guard, which firstly is nice to have. And secondly, if you don't want all that excess guard, you can drop guard on your armor set, allowing you, as I've said to be before, 
to have more variety, more damage skills, more defensive skills. Whatever you want, it makes your armor set better. However, in the grand scheme of things, I think you'll want to change this for its alternative switch skill, Sheathing Retreat, as it tends to be more valuable more often during a hunt. This is sort of the end of the second stage. I've purposely not covered switch skills that aren't the default ones up until this point because I know that one of the biggest issues with picking up a new weapon is trying to figure out which switch skills to use. So I wanted to make the guide focused around the basic stuff or the default stuff so that you don't have to worry about picking up the extra bits and bobs or worrying about which skills to pick. But now we're going to talk about switch skills. Anyone who knows how to play the lance and is watching this anyway will probably think that this is a long time coming. But here it is, it's time to talk about Instablock. Instablock is the single best switch skill that Lance has access to, assuming that you've given yourself enough time to learn its intricacies. So this switch skill replaces the regular guard, the shoulder button one, with Instablock. With it equipped, instead of blocking straight away, the character will do a funny little shield wiggle, and after that shield wiggle, Instablock will act like a normal guard. But during that shield wiggle, there is a small window to super counter. If timed properly, a large cross-shaped flash will occur, and you'll block the monster's attack without taking any chip damage or any stamina consumed. This alone is amazing, but it doesn't end there. After insta-blocking, you enter a new state that we'll call post-insta-block. From this state, you're able to instantly insta-block again, and that's how you get cool videos like this. Alternatively, you can immediately activate a wire bug skill, use guard dash, use your charge attack, or you now have a special follow-up attack called cross sweep. Cross sweep used to be crap, but after the buffs in Sunbreak, it is now the single best DPS move that Lance has access to. So using Instablock and following up with cross slash or cross sweep is an incredibly viable tactic. But more importantly, it's an incredibly fun thing to do. In fact, Instablock's biggest weakness is that it's so fun. I end up using Instablock when other methods of guarding are a much smarter thing to do. Once you've got a feel of how the Lance plays and you're confident with its basic kit, I strongly recommend that you switch to Instablock and try it out because it's amazing if there's only one switch skill that you should switch, it's this one. Next up, another switch skill that I recommend switching. Sheathing Retreat is a replacement for Twin Vine, and it does what it says on the tin. You press the wire bug button and you'll sheath the weapon, all the while getting launched backwards very quickly. It's got a decent period of invulnerability on it. It gets you sheathed really quickly and it can travel a decent distance. Lance being a weapon that takes chip damage just from dealing with attacks tends to get Lance players into tricky situations sometimes where if you try and sheath you'll die but if you don't sheath and you block the attack you'll also die. Sheathing Retreat solves this problem and the real trick with Sheathing Retreat is that it's not only good as a panic get out of the way, but it's also really good as an offensive gap closer. You can choose where to launch yourself by angling your character the opposite direction right before you use the move, and it'll allow you to leap through things that would otherwise impede your approach to the monster. 
I have already talked about Shield Tackle in another video. It's the switch skill that swaps out with Guard Dash. We won't spend much time on it, but if you are interested in Shield Tackle, I recommend checking out my other video. But in short, it's a combination of Guard Dash and its follow-up move, Shield Attack. Shield Tackle, then, isn't bad. It gives you quick access to KO, but losing access to Leaping Thrust really hurts. And the next switch skill I'm about to talk, talk about does KO much better than Shield Tackle. Shield Charge is a replacement for the Charge slash Dash Attack, and it's another really useful switch skill. It trades being able to dash really, really long distances for being in a guarded state while you're charging. And it adds a hefty amount of KO damage onto your finishing attack. It seems like a no-brainer to use this over the normal charge, but it can sometimes cause issues if you haven't gotten used to the other methods of staying close to the monster. So you might want to get used to using Sheathing Retreat slash Twin Vine to quickly close large gaps if you're planning to use Shield Charge. The two options for the Anchorage slot are Spiral Thrust and Skyward Thrust. Both skills are in a similar spot. Anchorage will be your main Wirebug attack, but both of these two options will help supplement your fights as an alternative switch skill on the other slot. And in the right situation, they will be significantly more useful than Anchor Rage. Spiral Thrust is a three hit move with a guard point at the start that will buff your attack in a similar way to Anchor Rage. The first two hits are long breaching dash attacks and then you can do a final lunge for massive damage at the end. If you're out of position for the final attack, you can hold backwards on the joystick and then attack. You'll do a reverse sweep, which does less damage than the lunge, but it's better than whiffing completely. Unlike Anchor Rage, Spiral Thrust's guard point is affected by your guard skill. So there may be times that you want to bring guard for Spiral Thrust so that it doesn't get knocked back and you lose a wire bug. Another difference is that if you activate the guard point, your lance glows blue, giving you a 10% damage boost. And this boost can stack with Anchor Rage colors, making your lance glow with two colors and gaining both buffs additively. Spiral Thrust is also a really good movement tool you can really zip around the area using Spiral Thrust, which makes it pretty dandy when playing with other hunters that are causing the monster act to act really erratically. As a damage option, it's really strong if done perfectly. You need to get all three hits on the weak spot, or it's not as strong as using Leaping Thrust and Charged Wide Sweep as a combo. But if you can get all three hits off, it's a really powerful damage option. Skyward Thrust, on the other hand, does more or less the same thing, but vertically. You go up and then you go down. The attack is comprised of a hit as you jump up, three hits that do a lot of damage at the apex of the jump, and then one final hit at the bottom as you're landing. If you can get all hits to land, Skyward Thrust does incredible damage, and it is the single best source of damage that Lance has access to. But you need the monster's weak spot to be tall enough for that to happen. Skyward Thrust also has some serious end lag issues, which makes it risky if you don't know that your lag will end before the monster's lag. That covers all of the moves that the Lance has, and brings us to the true end of the second stage. If you can incorporate all of the stuff that I've talked about, and you can do it fluidly, 
then you can very comfortably say that you are good at using the lance. The next stage then is mastery. Unfortunately, this part isn't something simple to teach because it's about taking everything that you've got and applying it really effectively against the monster. It's about using the best combo for the specific situation. It's about knowing the really specific monster matchup stuff, like knowing how many insta blocks to do against Laga Lucent Naga Cougars, like spin to win attack, or figuring out that you can punish angry, furious Rajang's fist slam by insta blocking the slam and then anchor raging the lightning that comes afterwards. It's about positioning yourself optimally, normally on the left side of the monster, so that you can hit charged wide sweeps more accurately. There are also things like getting really consistent with insta-block, but you've also got the inverse where you need to know when not to insta-block. As I've said earlier, thinking about how best to hit the monster is only half the battle when using the lance. Knowing how best to deflect the monster is just as important. You've got the tools, and now it's about being creative with how you apply them to each situation you end up in. This has been a huge video for me to create, so I'd really appreciate it if you guys gave it a like. If there is anyone that you know that wants to try out a new weapon, or wants to learn how to use the lance, I would be honored if you sent them this video. And if you've been sent this video, then I hope you found it helpful and I hope you enjoy using the lance. If you liked this video, maybe check out some of my other videos. You could also subscribe and hit the bell icon to keep up to date with my future videos. And if there are any specific videos that you'd like me to cover, then leave something in the comments below and we'll see what I can do. And finally, I would like to thank you for watching. See you next time.